chapel service today. Um, I would like to recognize and thank those who are leaving today's service. I'm looking forward to hearing more information about the saints. So, um, gosh, there's just so many that we can talk about. So today is going to be enlightening. But thank you all for organizing this for us. And I'd like to recognize Anna DiMaggio. Um, Liam Shacklin is going to start off for us today. Then Anna, Cole Schultz, Colin Schultz, uh, Mackenzie Olinger. I'm getting your name right now. <laughs> In CLC, I was calling her by the wrong last name. And Cameron Abier. So, and it's Abier, not Herbert. <laughs> the Louisiana pronunciation. So, thank you all again for being here and let us worship. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for all the gifts and opportunities that you give us. Lord, we ask that you make us into holy and faithful servants, that we might be like players in the great divine symphony. Protect all those on this campus as we approach the end of the semester, and grant us peace throughout, through all of the tasks we have to do. We ask this in Jesus' name, Amen. Hey y'all. So, <laughs> so today we're talking about the saints. I thought it was a really great time, especially because we're starting Advent in a new little liturgical year, and there are so many great saints, and I know all the Catholics in this room could probably talk about for about a couple years on the different kind of saints that we really hold dear to our hearts. Um, but because we are like on a Methodist campus, I wanted to like clear up misconceptions about like the role of saints for us first. Um, so the biggest misconception that I hear is that we worship saints, which is not true. We very much revere them, and we seek their examples and learn from their lives. Um, first and foremost, we desire to be like Christ. Um, but we find a lot of guidance and comfort in watching another broken person struggle with the same things that we do, or love the same things we do, and love God so fiercely, um, and like choose him even throughout all of his brokenness and everything like that. Um, so we get to learn from their lives and we get to ask them for prayers as I ask all of you to pray for me and as we ask each other to pray for us. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to read a little excerpt from the um, Catechism of the Catholic Church just about little saints and then we'll get started in our big long line of saints. So, um, excerpt 958. The intercession of saints, being more closely united to Christ, those who dwell in heaven fix the whole church more firmly in holiness. They do not cease to intercede with the Father for us, as they offer the merits which they acquired on earth through the one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. So by their fraternal concern is our weakness greatly helped. So my saint that I'm going to talk about is my confirmation saint, Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity. She's not very well known. She doesn't even have like holy cards as we have for many, many saints. Um, but she was a Carmelite nun in France. Um, before she became a nun, she was a consecrationist, so you know that sparked my interest. And she basically spent her entire life in like the Carmelite. Um, meditating on the perfect love that comes from the Trinity. That's all she did her entire life, was trying to understand like how perfectly like God is love and how he loves us and how we are called to love like that. And I think that's like, for me, um, was really inspiring just to like go back to that very basic like understanding of like, yes, God is love and that is worth a lifetime of like, wondering about and like discerning and knowing about um so one of her favorite quotes for me is believe that he loves you believe in his exceeding love if nothing else believe that he loves you um so yeah that's kind of why she's near and dear to my heart so i'm gonna pass it over to cole and here you go
So the saint that I will be talking about is Saint Raphael the Archangel. So, in fact, he is one of seven archangels that stands before the throne of the Lord in heaven and besides Raphael, Michael and Gabriel are the only archangels mentioned by name in the Bible. Uh, he's one of a few saints who was never actually human, but he became a saint for his work in helping humanity. So his identity came about because of a biblical story which claims that he healed the earth when it was defiled by the sins of fallen angels in the book of Enoch. Thus, he is the patron saint of healing. And so he has the ability to heal illness and physical injury, as well as heal people emotionally and mentally. Um, besides being my confirmation saint, I mean, I think I chose him as my confirmation saint through just a, a stream of uh, injuries that I've had. <laughs> I've played soccer my whole life, <laughs> so just to name a few, I've broken one foot, fractured the other foot, I've had a broken arm, I broke my right wrist, fractured my left wrist, left wrist. I've had a bruised rib, a concussion, and strained back muscle. So, needless to say, I've come to him for help quite frequently. So it's it's very fitting that uh, uh, he was the patron saint of healing. And I can't say that he's worked any miraculous healings where I was just better the next day, but I've gone through all my injuries uh, better than I was before. So I can definitely say that he has worked worked in my life, and his healing is, has been a true presence, especially through that concussion, which was most recent. Um, to this, that is Saint Raphael the Archangel, and I will now. Hey everyone, so the saint that I choose to speak about is not my confirmation saint. My confirmation saint was things saint Michael the Archangel. I don't really know why I picked him, but I just did. But the saint I will be talking about is Saint Joseph of Cupertino. So this is the ancient saint of test taking, if anyone did not know that. <laughs> so, a little bit of backstory on St. Joseph of Cupertino. So, he was a priest, and obviously, he got him down to be a saint. But, before you could be a priest, you have to take a test to, like, have that position. So, he, he took it time after time. He took it multiple times, and could not pass it. And, you know, like, like everyone would be starting to get frustrated, like, is this, like, the thing I think, the, like, the thing that God's calling me to do in my life, is this what I want to do? And so he just prayed to, he just prayed to the Father and was like, just when I take the test the next time, only give me the questions that I know the answers to. So the next time we took the test, he passed. So I picked this thing because I feel like I relate so much to him because I, I know all of you will probably struggle with test taking um, to some extent. It is hard, it's super frustrating. And a lot of when you're sorry for the test, when you get the test, it just goes off the window and you don't remember it. But me personally, a little story. Um, so I, I'm interested in the dental school, but to get into dental school, you have to take the DAT, which is the dental admissions test. And I took it a tour of three times. So my first time I got a relatively good score and my second time taking it, I did a lot worse. And I was really, I was really concerned, like, is this even like the right career for me? Like this test is really hard and I don't know if I want to take it again. But after praying about it, just asking St. Joseph Cooper to like intercede for me for the Father, I started taking it again and I increased my score by two and it's a score I have now. I'm satisfied with it. So I say that because that's my own personal experience, and I'm sure a lot of all of you in this room definitely have your own personal experiences with test taking anxiety or like just struggling to take tests. And so that's why I picked him because uh, I have struggle with that, and every time I need help, I go to him to intercede for you. Definitely. So after that, I will turn it to, I think, McKinsey. Talk about St. 
Hi, I'm going to be talking about St. Catherine of Siena, and she is my favorite saint of all time. So I'm going to kind of um, tell about her life and her story. So Catherine was born in the mid-1300s in Siena, Italy, so she's a pretty um, old saint. She was the youngest of 25 children, 25 kids, insane. Um, and at the age of 16, um, her sister's husband had, um, no, her sister had died, so her parents tried to um, set her up with her sister's husband, but she was so devoted to Christ and she wanted to live such a holy life, so she actually marred her appearance and cut her hair so that she would seem ugly. She was a very pretty um, young woman, and so she just wanted to devote her life to Christ. She did not want any man in her life. So at the age of 18, she joined the Third Order of St. Dominic so that she can live at home but still um, be in the religious community and serve others. And this is when she picked up a life of fasting and devotion, an extreme life of fasting, for sure. And at the age of 21, Jesus appeared to her and asked her to actually leave the order to serve the poor. She was often seen serving in hospitals and she took lots of food and other supplies from her home without her parents' permission, and she would give it to the poor. She was also very politically active in Italy, so whenever the papacy was under um, French attack around the uh, Crusades, she convinced the papacy to move back to Rome. She actually led a crusade to the Holy Land during the Crusades, which is pretty cool. She also established a monastery outside of Siena for women, and she was a very talented writer. She wrote over 400 letters and prayers that were influential to the church, and I actually have this book. Um, and this is a picture of her, and this is all her letters and prayers that made her one of the three women doctors of the church. And being a doctor of the church is a very, like, um, a holy title, I guess. Not many people have it. And most doctors of the church are men, so she's really, she's, she's a baddie. She's a good. <laughs> so, um, she also had a lot of mystical visions, and this is one that she describes in her letters as her mystical marriage to Christ. So Christ appeared to her and asked her to be his bride, and <clears throat> he gave her a ring that is claimed to be made out of his own flesh, but the ring was only visible to her. And Christ um, also gave her the stigmata. The stigmata is the um, wounds of Christ, and they're very, very painful. And so, um, actually the stigmata was only visible to her, but they were found after she had died. And also Jesus appeared to her again, and gave her the option of having an earthly crown of like earthly dominance or like a crown of thorns. And she chose the crown of thorns, which she is often depicted with. And um, yeah, so at the age of 33, she got ill, um, probably from her very intense fasting, and she died um, at age 33, which is the same age that Jesus walked on this earth. And a fun fact, her body is incorrupt, which means that um, it did not decay. So actually her face kind of decayed a little bit. I've seen pictures, um, but her body is still intact. And you can actually go see her body. I don't remember the name of the church, but it's um, a little chapel in Italy. So if you're interested, you can go visit her, along with some other saints that are also incorrupt. She was canonized in 1461, and she's a patron saint of Europe, Italy, fire, sickness, and miscarriages. She's a patron saint of a lot of things, but those are her biggest ones. And the reason, St. Catherine was my confirmation saint, and I had a very um, like personal experience with her um, around my confirmation. So she like um, kind of reached out to me. There's like a saying in the church, like you don't pick the saints, like the saints find you. So she kind of found me. And her life is very inspirational, and she's my biggest role model in faith. And she's just such a powerful and holy woman, and she inspires everyone around the world, especially women. And I think that um, 
She's just awesome. So yeah, trust me, Catherine. And I will turn it over to Ken. Um, so my name is Cameron. My saint is Saint Helen. So I chose her because she was my confirmation saint, like the, uh, many of us have said. And she's the patron saint of difficult marriages, um, divorced people, converts, and archaeologists. And it's really because um, her husband had like some political power, and then her son ended up reigning. Uh, and after he like became the political leader of the time, he won this big battle, and she was like, you know what, I'm gonna become part of the Christian faith. So she chose at like an older age, as a mother, um, to follow this faith, and so she made that choice not being raised in it, which is why I liked her. Um, so after her son got his political power, he gave her like titles and things, and he was like, he put medals in her honor, and she still like dressed really modestly and would go out and help people. Um, one of her big things is like at the age of 80, she like watched and helped build like two churches, um, which I thought was cool because like that's not my grandma right now, just like being out there working and everything. Um, one of the big things she did was she set out to find the Holy Cross, and she did that by like looking and she found a plaque and the nails. And so they proved that it was a holy cross because they brought a sick person there and they touched like all three and they were healed, which is why she's the patron saint of archaeologists. Um, so when she passed away, she let people, like her son let people know of all the service she had done for others, and that's why she was canonized as a saint. Um, I liked her and I chose her not just because of all the good things she's done, but because she's the patron saint of converts. As a child, I was grown up, like, being taught the Catholic faith, and my mom was often my catechism teacher, which is probably why I was so rebellious about it. But I was like, you know what? How is this true? Like, how do we, how do we just believe this and just accept that, like, this isn't made up? And like Mackenzie said, usually, like, your, like, your confirmation saint kind of calls to you, and I didn't feel like I was having that aha moment. And we had to write a paper to confirm. And I was like, well, I guess like, I'll just pick any saint. I'll write about him, and it'll be fine. Uh, but I picked her. I liked her name. And I was like, well, let me look into this. And I really appreciated like that she chose this faith for herself. And I was like, well, you know, with everything I know and with all the things she's done, I could follow in her footsteps, and I can choose this faith for myself. It doesn't just have to be because I was brought up in it. And so it was like my own little conversion, I guess. Like from like, okay, I was taught this, but now like, I'll follow this for myself. And so that's my record. That's St. Helen. <laughs> Closing prayer. Yeah, so before closing prayer, I'm gonna um, give you just a list. So saints have patronages, as you've kind of heard. It's kind of like their specialty because of something they've done in life or something they're really good at or something they struggled with. So this is kind of like a fun list of things that help us college kids, especially going into um, prep week and finals week. So St. Anthony is the patron saint of lost things. Um, I definitely have used, I've been like, St. Anthony, where are my car keys? I don't know. Um, St. Expeditus is the patron saint of procrastination. So <laughs> if you just need to get some done, say a prayer. Um, St. Joseph of Cupertino is the patron saint of test taking, like um, like we heard about today. Um, St. Vitus is the patron saint of oversleeping. So I also have prayed much to him in the last couple of weeks. Um, St. Albert the Great is the patron saint of science students, because I know we have a lot of science students in the room. Um, St. Drago is the patron saint of coffee. And then St. Diphina is the patron saint of anxiety. Um, so, and there are, if you ever have a struggle, like a Google search away will help you find a saint that like can give you an inspirational story or something to learn about. Um, but yeah, thank you all for sharing and let's just close in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for these holy men and women that you have given us as an example to follow. 
We ask that through your steady effort and purification that you might make us more whole and like you. We ask Mary and all the saints to pray for us and with this day and to help us become saints too. God, we ask you to bless us in this Advent season as we await your coming. Help us to grow in patience and truth and kindness today. We ask all of this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. That was beautiful. I, uh, I learned a lot about saints. Do any of you have any questions? Do you want to be any questions? I really appreciate you made you presented them in a way that was personal 